But no doubt, it's uh, basketball time. Uh, football season coming to an end, and the Red Raiders uh, excited to get back on the court before they really head on a you know, lengthy kind of road trip here. This will be the last uh, game in the uh, for, for a home game here for a couple of weeks. Long Island University coached by Gary Kellogg in his third year. You saw their starting lineup for Sean Cotton, Julian Batts, Jay Sean Augusto, Raekwon Clark, and Ty Flowers. Flowers, by the way, is the nation's leading rebounder. And for Chris Beard and his Red Raiders, it's Kyler Edwards, Terrence Shannon, Jemias Ramsey, TJ Holyfield, and Davide Moretti. Red Raiders remain unbeaten. They are 4-0 for Chris Beard, the National Coach of the Year after that 31-7 season of a year ago in which the Red Raiders played on the final Monday night of the season as Chris Beard likes to talk about it. And would certainly like to get back there again. This is T.J. Holyfield and Ty Flowers ready to get this one started from Lubbock. And we are underway. Red Raiders control the tip with Holyfield and Chris, we saw the other night against Tennessee State. T.J. Holyfield in that Red Raider lineup does a lot of things, but one of them is a calming influence on his teammates, I think. There's just no question. I think he, he is at some level the most important player on this basketball team because I'm not certain if he has a true backup, and you just don't want to see him uh, pick up uh, early fouls again tonight like he did the other night because playing without him for extended periods is not a recipe for success. Terrence Shannon hit a couple of threes in that win over Tennessee State his first of the year, but that attempt here is off the mark and Long Island with the basketball for the first time. That's Raekwon Clark outside, a guy that was a one-time walk-on to this program, earned a scholarship and has been twice named to the Northeast Conference All-League team and very quickly, Chris, this is not a good sight for the Red Raiders. Yeah, that's just what we discussed right there as you watch yeah, TJ yeah, Holyfield kind of sticks his hip out just a little bit, just enough uh, for, I believe it was uh, Vershawn Cotton with uh, uh, Jay Sean Augusto uh, with the, took, the, took the hip check right there from TJ Holyfield. Now, now, here's the key. If you're Texas Tech, how long can TJ Holyfield go without picking up that second foul? Because this is what happened the other night. And then it was a lengthy period uh, in the first half and part of the second without him on the floor. So he just was in foul trouble the entire night. Played only 14 minutes in that game, had eight points, but not much playing time. And from the corner, Julian Bats gets Long Island on the board. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Bats does, man. Lefty, uh, just a, a shooter, deep range. <laughs> Red Raiders turn it over on the pass, and very quickly, it's Augusto for Long Island, and a, the officials have stopped play for a moment. And that is, that's Pershawn Cotton that limps to the Long Island bench. Their, their bench is not very long as it is. If they can ill afford an injury, they've already got Jack Valentine, a 6'9 inside player who cannot go today because of an ankle injury. It's, uh, they have three players playing 34 plus minutes. They have five different guys playing 27 plus minutes. I mean, not a deep uh, bench at all for Coach Kellogg. But... TJ Holyfield looking for a teammate. Connor Edwards playing today with that left thumb. Heavily taped, his runner doesn't go, but he'll wind up with the basketball back in his hands. Second opportunity not there, but Jemias Ramsey keeps it on the Red Raiders' end. Here's Davide Moretti. Yeah. That is almost automatic. And the shots aren't falling, you know, if, if, the, if you get a tip out right there. And that's where offensive rebounding is such a key because it gives guys like Morrow an opportunity uh, for a money is what they call it in, in this program and in Chris Beer's program, which is just like a, uh, a second chance opportunity that Morrow makes the most of it there from the corner. It's 11-3 of the year. He's shooting better than 50% and the Red Raiders have drawn a charge. And Augusto way out of control right there. Tried to get through three different Red Raiders and uh, several guys looking to step up and take a charge. And if you're Holyfield, that's the second time it wasn't called on the previous trip down. 
those high ball screens, he's just got to, you can't lean into it. You've got to to stay firm with the white base. You kind of see him do it there again. You've got to be careful. It's, it's a cheap one. You just don't need to put your team in harm's way there, especially early in the game. Chris Clark in the ball game for the Red Raiders. His shot off the mark. Here's Raekwon Clark down and had a couple of teammates in the corner. Neither of them could, can get the shot to go. It was Ashton Bradley whose uh, shot did not fall. He had Ty Flowers there as well. Holyfield trailer had it inside. Didn't take the shot. His pass to Moretti deflected out of bounds. Still Red Raider basketball. Worlds open. Uh, interesting that uh, Moretti again finds some space in the corner again. If you're the opposition, you just can't lose track of him at all on the offensive end of the floor. He was playing with fire there. The junior out of Bologna, Italy, averaging 14-3 for the Red Raiders. Inbound play, Jemias Ramsey. Left-handed shot in close, doesn't go, and the Sharks are on the run. Raycon Clark going to drive it inside and score. He's the leading scorer for Long Island, averaging better than 20 a game. And, John, they just come down in a five-out set, and Raekwon just drove to the basket. There's nothing tricky about that at all. One-on-one -on -one basketball, no-help defense there, and Clark with the easy bucket and the finish with the left hand. Even with their shooting struggles the other night, and they were plenty against Tennessee State, the Red Raiders held those Tigers to 35% shooting. And again, Davide Moretti, open look, and nothing but the bottom of the net. Uh, playing inside out right there, the penetrating kick. And again, if you're Long Island, that's not going to happen much. You just can't lose track of him and uh, give those shots up. Davide's got both of the Red Raider buckets who trail by one. Drive by Clark again, and he'll draw a foul. So Clark will be at the free throw line when we return Long Island in front of the Red Raiders. Seven to six, you're watching. It has been on point as they've been over the last few home games. And in fact, a couple of them actually spent the night uh, in front of United Supermarkets Arena last night to get ready for today's game. These students have been reliable here for the first four home games for Texas Tech. And John and Chris, I'm curious to know, have either of you ever spent the night somewhere to get ready for a game? Uh, I have traveled overnight to get to a Red Raider basketball game without sleep, but yeah. uh, never camped out in a tent waiting to get in. I don't think I'd do well in a tent. In, in, in the city, in front of an arena, or, or elsewhere. It doesn't really matter. Baylor did mention something there about turnovers and Long Island taking advantage of a couple of Red Raider turnovers here early on. Yeah, absolutely. They, they've scored uh, five points off of those uh, Red Raider turnovers, and really that's that's why they've got a 9-6 lead here early. Texas Tech doing a good job on the glass to counter us. The second chance opportunities is you see Kevin McCullough making his uh, presence known early. Yeah, and McCullough with a nice pass underneath to Chris Clark, and Clark the guy that isn't at least known early on this season for his scoring, but his assist making. But if first Clark gets into the scoring column, look out. And it's that's one of the things that I think this team is going to really need from Chris Clark is, is scoring. He's given them so much rebounds, assists, but at some point you, you're going to need him to score some and be much more efficient offensively. But, but he just he gets such a high on uh, being a facilitator, as you see right there. Tyler yeah, Edwards, the yeah. beneficiary, and that is official Darren George talking to Tyler Edwards and Ty Flowers of Long Island University. Yeah, Ty Flowers was, uh, he was... He was being very interesting in pregame as well. He's come in and uh, he's got a little edge to him. And I think what uh, Coach Beard is telling Kyler Edwards, man, stone face is kind of the theme. Lock it up, you know, don't, no highs, no lows, just, just focus on the next play. Flowers and Kyler Edwards bumping after the bucket by Kyler Edwards. Flowers is the nation's leading rebounder coming into this ball game. So to accomplish that, you probably need to play with a bit of an edge inside. Well, Ashton Bradley pulled the trigger from deep there. Kevin McCullough had it slapped away, and it's going to wind up in the hands of the Sharks. Augusto, who had scored a moment ago, quickly up the floor. Raycon Clark threw it away. Tried to get it to Ashton Bradley. 
who, by the way, is the only member of this Long Island University team who played high school basketball in the state of Texas, homeschooled in the Houston area. Yeah, and, uh, I think he uh, wants to play well in his home state. As a uh, senior, likely could be the last time he plays within the, uh, the uh, state of Texas as a college basketball player. Clearly a huge Red Raider crowd in the arena today, but Long Island with their share of fans as well. Chris, you mentioned the 10-day road trip these guys are on. San Diego to Denver to Lubbock. Okay, that was their that was their situation yesterday. They are headed uh, to Vegas this afternoon, and uh, they won't play until Thursday or Friday. But uh, that is quite the uh, the trip to pack for. Chris Clark got in the lane, handed the ball off to T.J. Holyfield, who can't finish. Now the Red Raiders are there again. Holyfield got it. Red Raiders are in front at 12 to 11. Yeah, T.J. was just a very mid-range game. And, and, uh, just need to avoid that second foul here with 13 to go in the first half. Jermaine Jackson gave it off to Clark, and Raekwon delivers. With the three goggles right there. Kind of the, he kisses the three and then holds him up. He's just a scorer, man. 20 points a game. Texas Tech won't see many guys averaging 20 a game the rest of the year like uh, Raquan Clark is. 12 on the shot clock. McCuller, top of the key, had an open look. And the Red Raiders have another three in this game. Kevin McCullough getting some early playing time, taking advantage of it. He's passed up some of those looks right there at the top of the key, wide open, uh, took it and drilled it. His first three of the year, and Jermaine Jackson answers for Long Island. Blow for blow. Long Island back on top by a couple at 17-15. This team is picked to win the Northeast Conference this year. Would have had five starters back, but one of their expected starters injured and not playing this season but the other four are back for Derek Kellogg in his third season with Long Island on the previous trip down you said you know Jermaine Jackson with the three for Long Island and it was almost from Long Island I mean he, he was uh, way behind the arc when uh, when he pulled the trigger there but as we've seen already a couple times now coach Kellogg clearly okay with his team and they, they make nine threes a game this is just kind of who they are they, they want to get a shot up early in the clock they don't want to face a set defense so transition and uh, some of those ball screens and pitch aheads and things like that is what they're good at and uh, you'll see them take the first open look many times down they hit seven threes in a loss at San Diego State on Friday night. Aztecs won that one 81-64. A friendly roll for Chris Clark. He will check out Terrence Shannon back in for the Red Raiders. Russell Chiwa is in for Chris Beard. Long Island has a seven-footer on the floor as well in Usman Dean. Cotton back on the floor for you. Yeah, had gone out limping earlier, but handling the ball against Moretti. Here's Raekwon Clark after the switch over the top of Moretti, but the shot doesn't fall. Tyler Edwards laid it off to Big Rush, and he lays it in. Usman Dean fouls. So when we return, Russell Chiwa at the free throw line for the Red Raiders trying to put the Red Raiders in. Kevin McCullers first three of the year. So the redshirt freshman out of San Antonio contributing to the Red Raider effort today. Big Russ at the free throw line. Not going to complete the three-point play. The Seven-foot true freshman out of Cameroon for the Red Raiders. And have to get better at, uh, at the strike. That's going to be a liability. But both big men on, on the floor right now for both teams not really good at the free throw line. Jermaine Jackson had hit a three earlier. That long-range shot didn't go. Jamias Ramsey felt the pressure. Drew some oohs and ahs from the crowd. And so will Tyler Edwards. 
And Tyler has got that tape on his thumb a little bit. Bit it back in practice a couple of uh, days ago. Playing through it's non shooting hand, but 1 11 from the floor the other night versus Tennessee State. But uh, stepping up early here, 2 of 4. He's already got five points, John. He's very good at the free throw line in that game as the Red Raiders as the team made 32 of 38. Raekwon Clark inside got around Ramsey but couldn't get the shot to go and the carom into the hands of the Red Raiders. Tyler Edwards going to set the offense. Edwards, Jemias Ramsey, Terrence Shannon, Davide Moretti, and Russell Chiwa. As we count down towards 10 minutes to go in the opening half of this game. Terrence Shannon, the lefty, not there. Gusto the rebound and he's not wasting any time. Vershawn Cotton got it. That's body language after he let it go. That's their game. I mean, just get the ball up the floor, get a shot up in a hurry, and when they fall, start to fall, you're in trouble. Texas Tech right now having a hard time just executing as the game slows down in the half court. I think partly because TJ Holyfield uh, sitting over there on the bench. Tyler Edwards way off the mark and Cotton comes away with it. The long down court pass to Jackson. Really doesn't have much of a shot, but he drives inside the spinning move and the shot goes. He'll charge Davide Moretti with the foul. Cotton is a 71. Well, it's Jackson will be at the free throw line. Yeah, you see the drive right there. He gets he gets to the block, spins back middle, but typically there's defensive help right there uh, on the block for Texas Tech. That's side defense. You keep guys on the side of the floor, and then you're, you're, you're forcing baseline, and that's where the help is. None to be had there. Past two seasons, the Red Raiders have been 17 and one at home. That includes victories over every non-conference team they have faced. Jermaine Jackson is perfect at the free throw line this season, but he's only been there twice. And remains perfect there. Long Island with a one-point advantage. Red Raiders do have T.J. Holyfield back in the game. With Chris Clark going to go against Usman Deem inside. Got him up, but then tried to pass the ball over to Nadolny. Clarence Nadolny, the true freshman from Paris in the game. And Chris, I think you feel like Chris Clark is being too unselfish. He had a bucket right there, John. He, if he just goes right up, and he gets the makes the move right there. He's got the shot. But again, just trying to make uh, you know, get other teammates involved. But it, it almost ended up in the turnover. Averages nearly eight assists a game, but he had an opportunity there as he had Usman Deem off his feet. This holy field down low to Clark again. Gonna go over Flowers and can't get it, but Terrence set on the collar. Well, and, and you know, Chris Clark not able to finish right there, but you see the opportunity that it creates because he attacks the rim. You don't end up with a turnover. You end up with a, a follow-up dunk right there by uh, Terrence Shannon, and that's uh, that is certainly uh, something. He he's a slasher. Is uh, is Terrence Shannon? He, he attacks the basket. On that bench, Jared Kellogg was up imploring his team to get big inside and block somebody out. And T.J. Holyfield has Jermaine Jackson pinned in the corner. He'll have to call timeout. Yeah, and I think you're lucky that T.J. Holyfield, boy. You as long as he can stay out of foul trouble, remain on the floor, uh, you know, he, he, it's so easy to see, too, why he was this highly sought-after grad transfer, ended up uh, in Lubbock, uh, you know, because Kansas, the Jayhawks, and Bill Self wanted him, so certainly a big get for uh, Chris Beard and the Red Raiders. He's 1-2, one and 1-2 in, uh, in this ball game, came in 26-32 on the year. Red Raiders have turned it over again. Jermaine Jackson going to try to drive the length of the floor. And is going to pick up a foul call down inside. Chris Clark moved over. Thought his feet might have been set, Chris. Yeah, they, they're going to say they got him. Darren George calls him uh, with the, the body right there, I believe. Foul is on. Yeah, put it up on the. What are they calling on? It's the, you got two Red Raiders right there. Thought it was. Chris Clark, the senior transfer to the Red Raiders out of Virginia Tech. 
And Jermaine Jackson remains at the line. 5'10", 172-pound sophomore out of Shelby Township, Michigan. John, you get, if you're Jermaine Jackson, you get going downhill and attack the basket, something good happens. Yeah. Kevin McCuller, jump stop, shot not there, rebound by Julian Batts. Ty Flowers waiting outside the three-point line on the other side, wanting the ball, but they don't get it there. Here's Raekwon Clark. Nice move, got Holyfield leaning and able to drive around him inside and pick up another foul. Yeah, Clark, uh, he came to play today again after 20 a game. He's got seven so far on the chance to add to it. Flowers, on the other hand, comes in uh, averaging a double-double. He's yet to score uh, tonight. He's uh, recorded one rebound for a young man averaging almost 14 a game as the free throw goes in. He's almost in double digits as uh, Raekwon Clark. Hard to believe he was a walk-on. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's winning the, the walk-on lottery right there for LIU. In fact, as a walk-on, it played a couple of minutes in one of those games as a freshman. And in order to get that season back, apparently had to sit out the season opener this year. Uh, game against Rhode Island for the NCAA to allow another season of play. So uh, Raekwon Clark has had quite the journey in college basketball and is having an outstanding season at 20 plus points a game coming into this one this afternoon in Lubbock. Long Island University leading the Red Raiders by a couple as Jemias Ramsey back on for the Red Raiders. Their leading score. Here's Tyler Edwards still trying to find the range. Gave it to Holyfield inside. Fadeaway jumper off the glass. Such a soft shooting touch right there. Yeah, in about 6'8", 6'9", fading away right there. You're not, you're not blocking uh, that one in, uh, off the glass. And, and 106th career game for T.J. Holyfield. And all of them starts. Left up. Made that shot by Cotton. Falls short. Red Raiders have the ball. Holyfield with it again. He'll go inside. Usman Deem on the defense. Back to Moretti. Such a soft shot off the front iron, though. And the Sharks have the ball. And you know, Davide Moretti passed up an open look right there to give the ball to T.J. Holyfield. It makes you wonder, you know, when you end up with a, with a miss as you reverse the ball around. If you wish that uh, more would have pulled the trigger initially. You see Jemias Griffiths go to work in transition with a nice little, you know, jump stop. Maybe Euro. What you call that? Call it two points for the Red Raiders, who are up by a pair. Sharks are not going away. They trailed by six at halftime the other night against San Diego State. This is all part of that Continental Tire Las Vegas Invitational, and wow. Chris Beard, not going to like that as Raekwon Clark drives inside and scores. Raekwon Clark, man, he just, he just scores. He's got 11 points in the ball game, and it's tied, and the Sharks have a chance to go in front. Clark's got it again, and he'll get the charge call here. And Raekwon Clark ended up in the... Uh... It up in the front in the row after knocking down right. Dominic here, being held at the Orleans Hotel and Casino there in Las Vegas. Chris, the Red Raiders matched up with some quality competition. Yeah, absolutely, These, this is a chance to build your resume in the you know in the preseason or non-conference, and we'll take on Iowa on Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. How about uh, Luca Garza, the big for the Hawkeyes, 6'11", 260, averaging 23 and 10, and a couple of blocks. So you, you're facing one of the best double-double guys in the country uh, today. And Ty Flowers is ever 16 to 13. Malika Garza will uh, be a handful for the Red Raiders on Thanksgiving Day. Terrence Shannon's three didn't go, but Big Rush inside got the rebound, laid it back up and in. And nice job by Russell Chiwa. And, and once Russ, Russell Chiwa learns how to not be so timid and just explode off of two feet right there, Instead of being worried about his shot being blocked, because guess what? It is not. Uh, you know, he, he is going to be a handful, just a little unsure of himself right there, trying to make sure he's set with a nice finish. But once that turns into a two hand dunk, look out. Seven foot 280. Who wants to get in the way of that? And then 
Big Russ has been called for the foul, trying to get position inside. Raquan Clark might have flopped a bit, but he gets the foul call. I'd like to see that. Yeah, you can see you know, Clark did a. That's just a, uh, a veteran move uh, by the senior right there from New Haven, Connecticut. That kind of pulled it off on uh, Big Russ, as you mentioned. A uh, bit of a flop there, certainly. But a uh, smart on Clark's part. He's uh, tying his shoe right now and not involved in the offense. There he is, back up. As the ball crosses half court, he's down on one knee, tying his shoe. Nice move by Augusto inside. Missed the shot, but the Red Raiders bump him hard. And another foul against the Red Raiders. And they're attacking Chiwa right now. As you see Chiwa with the switch, he can't contain. Yeah, he cannot contain Augusto right now. Just around the corner to help. Just a little late getting there. And, you get going downhill, it's a problem, but it's all based off of the switch uh, up high uh, with Big Russ not being able to contain him. That's a seven-footer trying to step over and defend a six-foot guard on the drive, and now Chiwa will leave and T.J. Holyfield returning for the Red Raiders. I think Chris Beard sees the same thing. You've uh, gone small right now. Uh, when, when Usman Dean is in there for LIU, then, you know, Chiwa can... can He's got somebody he can play with, but when LIU goes small, there's a problem. Three smaller guards, and then you've got uh, Raekwon Clark and Ty Flowers, and Jemias Ramsey's left alone out there, and he, he, he heats up. Somebody's going to have to come out and defend him. And, you know, th those are shots early in the shot clock. If they go in, the head coach is clapping. If they don't, you know, a little frustrated that you didn't run anything and get something better or work for something better. Long Island gets it right inside again to Raekwon Clark, and he scores around Avery Benson and Davide Moretti. Splits the double team. I yeah. mean, just can't allow that. But boy, uh, he, uh, Rayshon uh, Clark, Raekwon Clark, excuse me, well, he came to play today. Scott 13 is the only player in the game in double figures, and he has been as expected. Jamias Ramsey from the corner. Assist Holyfield, and that's back-to-back -back threes from the Red Raider freshman. And he's starting to heat up. And I see, you're going to see uh, LIU run a horn set right now. Two guys on the top of the elbow, two guys in the corner. Play off of that as they space the floor. Todd Flowers turned. That ball's off of his leg. Boy, for all the energy that Flowers had before the game, he has not played well at all today for Coach Kellogg. But uh, everything that he's not doing... Senior day. They'll take on the Kansas State Wildcats. That game begins at 1 o'clock right here at the United Supermarkets Arena. Versus Tennessee State the other night, neither team really got hot from behind the arc. And uh, tonight, so far in this one, uh, teams combined 9 of 13... Uh, for three, so they're all going in. As you see, Jamias Ramsey really just taking over offensively. A couple of threes and then grab the basket with a... Uh, I, I don't think they're going to okay. give him that one. Okay. I thought it was a potential end one opportunity. I, I thought it was two. This might be a long three off the mark, though, for Ramsey, who's got seven. He's the Red Raiders' leading scorer at this point. <laughs> Avery Benson will check out. Chris Clark back on. Chris Clark, uh, a couple of personal fouls. So uh, he needs to avoid that third one here with uh, about three minutes to go and a half. Pressure from the Red Raiders in the backcourt. Using up some of that shot clock. 3-10 remaining here in the first half. The Red Raiders in a zone. Flowers got it inside. David back on the perimeter to Raekwon Clark. His three doesn't go. Ramsey looks for an opening. He's got Holyfield in the corner. He'll give it to Clark inside. And Chris Clark, a lot of looking around and finally can't score. Get what you want right there. Pass up some open looks, but ultimately get what you want. Just can't finish it. Wow, and again, Sean Augusto right to the rack for the Sharks. And Augusto, man, he just gets up the floor in a hurry. Very, very experienced player. It was a big deal when uh, Long Island got him. He's part of this Sharks basketball program, but uh, played a ton of basketball. And, and this is what we talked about before this thing started. Transition defense was going to be key because uh, the Sharks want to get up and down the floor in a hurry. And if you're not paying attention, uh, you know, you just got to stop the ball and uh, get back on D. 
plays with gusto, that's for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's got six trying to narrow the margin with his seventh point of the night. I thought, uh, thought it interesting, speaking of the Sharks, that they were playing that uh, Baby Shark song here in the uh, arena earlier. They nice. played, it, played nice. it a couple of times. Absolutely. Student section had a good time with that. Davide Moretti had a couple of threes early there in the paint, delivers for the Red Raiders. Really has developed that part of his game in this last season or so of uh, being uh, on campus here in Lubbock. Just uh, used to be just strictly a, a three-point shooter, but uh, the mid-range game and guys take that away from him, so he's learned how to drive and get the ball in the paint, and he's, you know, just doesn't turn it over, but he's got that floater to add to it that uh, makes him more of a low round player. Here's Jemias Ramsey challenging Flowers inside. He'll pick up the foul and go to the free throw line. And Flowers, he's looking like uh, he's jet lagged. Yeah, has not scored, has recorded one rebound. Keep in mind, he can see this game averaging 16 and 13. Nation's leading rebounder. He's been uh, held in check so far with one rebound recorded uh, tonight and four double doubles out of the five games that they've played. Yeah, and had eight rebounds in the game that he did not have a double double. So he's he's been around the basketball a lot and he's just uh, struggled some here in the early going. Long Island is one and four on the season. Traveling across country from Brooklyn to San Diego to play there. Back to Lubbock today, then they head back out to Las Vegas. So they, they have played a tough schedule too. I mean, Rhode Island, UMass, George Mason, San Diego State. Preparing them for their conference play where they are the preseason favorites. Red Raiders have opened up a five point advantage. Gusto to Jermaine Jackson who drives into the lane, might have traveled. Didn't call it. Flowers in the corner, and he's on in the books now. Uh, they're hanging out in the corner with a penetrating kick. Where they just run that five out. They just kind of run the take turns, trying to penetrate, find an open shooter. As long as you knock them down, it's good offense. That's Jackson trying to reach around Tyler Edwards to get the basketball and unable to do it. Jackson at 5'10", Augusto listed at six feet tall. Neither one of them are very big. This will send Kyler to the free throw line. Shooting one and one. And I think one of the things that this Texas Tech basketball team will try to focus on as the season goes along is figuring out way for Kyler to get more free throw opportunities and turning him loose because he has been very good at the free throw line early on this season. And it, it's just because the other night, I mean, the shots aren't falling, but he ends up in double figures with just one made basket because he was eight of eight from the strike. And I think that's some nights they're not going to go in, but if he can continue to initiate offense by getting to the free throw line, some, some nights you're going to have to rely on that. He's a perfect 14 of 14 for the season. 6'3", 200-pounder. Can get down low with that kind of size. Chris Clark in the switch on the smaller guard. Boy, long-range jumper from Ashton Bradley is good. A three-pointer. Defense not been what you thought, but it's just also comes down to high level shot making. And they are going into the Sharks. Jemias Ramsey was going into the rack and picks up a foul. It'll be on Ty Flowers. You've seen Texas Tech implement that some in this first half, like that 2 2 1 kind of soft press just to slow the game down. You may see that a lot more in the second half, just to slow down the pace a little bit. Just, you know, so uh, you can't get out with some of these shooters and, and knock them down, and you get lost with a defense rotation. Somebody ends up wide open, and that really slows it down. And uh, we see more of that in the second half. Long Island University with six made three-pointers here in the first half. That is certainly... Help them stay right with the Red Raiders. 60% from behind the arc. That will work. Ramsey got one of two, and Long Island with the basketball under 30 seconds to go here before halftime. A chance to tie this game or even take the lead. They've 
you've got Raekwon Clark posted underneath Ty Flowers up top and Jay Sean Augusto with the basketball and now they'll start to play with 12 seconds. Parent Shannon on Raekwon Clark. That's in the corner to Jermaine Jackson. Shot not there. Shot clock actually with about to go off. Augusto, another chance and a rainbow at the buzzer is good. Wow. Three-pointer as the halftime buzzer sounds and the Long Island University Sharkity Games. That is a streak that dates all the way back to 1990, Chris. That is that is a long time throwing up three-pointers, but 800 consecutive games. You wondered about this, Red Raider pressure, and I've got the ball. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not giving it back. You might want to throw that back into play there. <laughs> right. Deflected right here. I tell you, if you sit on the front row, you got opportunity to make a play. And when that ball was deflected out of bounds, came right to us. We could have uh, held this thing up. Yeah, you see the traffic defense right there off of that, uh, that first play. And, you know, I think you'll see Texas Tech do some different things defensively just to try to change up uh, the mojo there. And that is impressive. 800 games in a row, making a three. The Raiders had left Flowers alone on the wing, but in the drive, and trying to kick that ball across court. Terrence Shannon draws a charge underneath, and the Red Raiders avoid another three and get the basketball. See, uh, you know, they just uh, ran a high pick and roll uh, right there at the top of the key. And uh, you with the foul. Julian Batts, a guy we didn't see all that much in the first half, called for that foul up front trying to fight through a screen the Red Raiders had set. You know, went out of the game maybe with an ankle injury or maybe a cramp early on that uh, didn't turn. And he looks, uh, looks like he's fine now. Tyler Edwards on the drive, kicked it back to Holyfield. Two on the shot clock. Holyfield threw it up and shot clock violation against the Red Raiders. Yeah, pass up some open looks and Tyler Edwards drives baseline but then leaves his feet and almost gets that pass stolen. Boy, that's that's one thing you'll ever want to do is when you, when you jump up in the air, you've given yourself up. Raekwon Clark had the ball taken away and tried to get it back as Moretti was going after it. Undercut the Red Raider guard and Raekwon Clark is a bit slow to get up. Clark, uh, Okay. An impressive first half for him, clearly. It's just one of those, you know, timing collisions that was just going to happen. It wasn't, uh, you know, too many, too many bodies in the same proximity at the same time when the ball arrived, basically. Sometimes you like that, but <laughs> not all the time and not necessarily in this sport. Red Raiders do inbound. Davide Moretti, Terrence Shannon. Tyler Edwards, T.J. Holyfield for the Red Raiders. Drive laid up, and it goes. Davide. Big time basket by Morrow right there. High off the glass, puts him in double figures. He's now got 10. First Red Raider to get into double figures. At 19, a season high the other night against Tennessee State. And there's another turnover by Long Island. So it's tricky because they, they run this five out but whenever the you penetrate the temptation is to sack in and help but that's what leaves those shooters open so i think what you see is you see it's about personnel which guys can i sag off of which guys do i need to stay connected to i think it's about personnel if your coach adams and coach beard at halftime probably reminding him you, you can sag you can't depending on who you're guarding julian bats picked up his second foul both of them here in the second half Edwards, Shannon going to drive against Flowers and got up and underneath him, laid it in. Boy, that's a nice move. I thought he was actually going to shoot the floater, but he gets underneath uh, Flowers and able to finish it uh, with his hand uh, right there on the left side of the rim. Nice aggressive move by the Red Raider freshman. Raekwon Clark knows an aggressive move or two. Nice ball movement. Augusto on the drive went right over the top of Shannon who draws his fifth charge of the season. 
Boy, Coach Kellogg is not happy and very animated over there. Felt like uh, T.J. Shannon had slid over there. Uh, Shannon on both ends. Yeah, Shannon uh, certainly doing his thing. Both ends of the floor. Yeah, Kellogg, boy, he was very animated right there. Hot. Came to Long Island from UMass. Longtime assistant with John Calipari at Memphis. He's been around plenty of successful programs. Tyler Edwards shot off the mark. Fight for the rebound. Winds up in the hands of Bershawn Cotton of the Sharks. He's just looking for an opening. Thought he had found it, but Jemias Ramsey grabbed the arm. This little pass interference right there is almost what that looked like. You're right. The hand fighting, and he just he got him on the... Knew he was beaten and, yeah, tried to swipe at the ball. Maybe he got a little long. He did get a lot of ball. He certainly did. And the crowd reacting. From our view, it looked like he, he kind of grabbed his arm after he swiped the ball, too. First foul in this ball game against Ramsey. And Vershawn Cotton at the line. Knocking it down. Came in a 71% shooter. Played for one of the top prep schools in the country. Hillcrest Prep of Phoenix. Akron transfer. This Clark with a couple of personal fouls comes back into the game here for Tyler Edwards. Never go too long of a period of time with this Red Raider basketball team where there's not a substitute waiting in. About each five guys gets about two minutes together, give or take, before a substitute comes. Always fresh. Moretti with a shot. Wow. Wow. That's a high percentage shot. Yeah, the, uh, the shot fake and then the drive baseline with a tomahawk right there. That will work. Wow. Gives the Red Raiders a three-point advantage. Now they've got to play on this end. Jermaine Jackson tried to knock it in high off the glass. Not there. Clark runs for the Red Raiders. And here's Jemias Ramsey. Wow. Got it. Derek Kellogg is going to stop it right there. Yeah, Coach Kellogg has seen enough right there. That's just one of those runs. Bottom average in 16 a game. And if you look around these guys, Jared Butler, Devin Dotson, Desmond Bain, Christian Doolittle, those guys, Xavier Sneed at the bottom, those guys are like all Big 12 types. So the Red Raiders certainly have two newcomers that have entered their program that are certainly uh, scoring at a rapid rate early on. That's a look at your Ford League leaders. Visit your local Texas Ford dealers today. Ford is the best in Texas. Raquan Clark has been very good for the Sharks, but the drive there, and he's going to pick up his fourth foul. Red Raider fans are happy to see that Clark has played well. Let's go over to Taylor Peters for a moment. That dunk by Taryn Shannon Jr. just excited the crowd and excited the bench going into that half or going into that timeout. Excuse me. The coach Beard just told his team, "Let's not get carried away with the big play. Let's just be consistent. Let's just be who we are. Do the same thing that we've done every day in practice this week." Guys. Thank you, Taylor. And I tell you, Jemias Ramsey has absolutely no fear, Chris. He is a true freshman but he will step up and try and take over a game. Well, you know, you, you talk about his athleticism because him in transition is just deadly, but when he starts knocking down jumpers and contested jump shots, things like that, I mean, he is an absolute handful. He's got 14 tonight, five of eight from the field. And wow, and Raekwon Clark, a, a rebound at put Long Island University with the nation's leading rebounder and a guy up there at the top of double-doubles, Ty Flowers. Not going to get one today, but he has been very impressive. Yeah, he yeah, comes into the game averaging 16 points a game, 13.2 boards. Nation's leading rebounder today, though, three points, two boards. It's just not not in the flow of the game. You see, uh, you see a player from DePaul on that list. The Raiders will see DePaul in about a week and a half. And then uh, we mentioned to you Chris Clark with the finish right there. But Luca Garza is somebody they'll see on Thanksgiving Day, averaging 23 and 10 and a half. Uh, big 6'11, 260, and uh, 100 pound center for the University of Iowa. Got Ty Flowers of the Sharks with four double doubles in their previous five games. Uh, 
impressive start to his season. Here's Rashawn Cotton trying to get inside. That ball slapped away and out of bounds. Will stay on LIU's end. LIU for years known as the Blackbirds. Combining of a couple of athletic departments of the Long Island University system and they took a vote by students and alumni and switched to the Sharks. This is their inaugural season as the Sharks. Yeah, they're almost like the Falcons or something, and, uh, but the Sharks won out. The Jaws was filmed where in uh, Marcus Vineyard? Not that far away, and there are some shark sightings off the coast in that area. T.J. Shannon smells blood. Yeah, he yeah, does. <laughs> Red Raiders certainly did a moment ago, but the sharks are hanging in there. In and out for Julian Batts. Tyler Edwards the rebound. Nice put back a moment ago by Chris Clark. Here's Edwards. Still having trouble finding the range, and the Red Raiders trying to run it down, but Clark up ends. For Sean Cotton over there in front of the Red Raider bench. Four team fouls against the Red Raiders here in the second half. Six on LIU. Ashton Bradley back in for LIU. Red Raiders have Kevin McCuller now off the bench. Tyler Edwards, T.J. Holyfield, Jemias Ramsey, and Terrence Shannon. Tech has opened up a nine-point advantage. It's their largest lead of this game. Yeah, a lot of, lot of first-pass traps uh, you're seeing right now in here in the second half, just trying to throw the Sharks off their game a little bit. Inbound pass into the hands of a Red Raider and Ramsey with the runner not there and may have picked up the only thought he might have gotten the foul call trying to get the rebound, but instead maybe on Ty for no, is it Ty Flowers? No, no, I think they're calling Rashawn Cotton. Okay. Here's the drive. Yeah, oh, and it's Ramsey trying to go up, and it was Rashawn Cotton who got underneath him. You're right. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. It's a player control foul. Yeah, he's, he's uh, Cotton's talking to Darren George right now, saying, hey, what, what am I supposed to do? Talk to Block out when he goes up in the air. What, what do you want me to do? Maybe not back up, but That's Jay exactly Sean Augusto right. will check in, and Cotton will sit. Jemias Ramsey at the line. I'm not sure. Was that waved off? I think so. They just called a land violation on uh, Terry Shannon. Well, yeah, clearly just... the ball had not gotten to the rim by the time he stepped in, but was out of the hand of Ramsey. Raquan Clark is going to draw attention on the baseline and. T.J. Holyfield and Chris Beer don't think that he committed a foul. Yeah, it's that cylinder rule right there. I mean, Clark has four fouls. You've got him pinned in there. Maybe a little bit of movement by T.J. Holyfield. And he's got a pair of fouls and will check out Shannon back in. It's a tough call. Really a tough call. That's especially for Holyfield. Well, their inbound pass nearly taken away by the Red Raiders. Jay Sean Augusto hits it. Shannon left alone, thought about it, dared him to take it, and he would not pull the trigger on it. I know who will. Tobias <laughs> Ramsey, don't back away from him. It's going up, and it's going in. Right on cue. 17 for Mr. Ramsey. On his average. Yep, he's got the full, uh, the full game going today, too. Raekwon Clark defended by a freshman. Clarence Nadoldi. Nice try by Jermaine Jackson, but who's waiting? 
Jemias Ramsey's not going to let that happen. Yeah, help side defense, yeah. Chris Beard wants the crowd into it right there. First block of the day by the Red Raiders. Here it is. Swatted. Didn't get him with the body at all. No. Just way above the rim there. And now with the rebound is Ramsey. Flowers couldn't get a three to go. It's been a frustrating day for him. Terrence Shannon, left-hander, got it to fall. Uh, the freshmen uh, are trying to take over for Texas Tech right now and do a pretty good job of it. Putting the clamps on the Sharks' offense. We got Jermaine Jackson in the corner, pushed off, and he traveled before. Yeah, you can feel the crowd starting to wear on, you know, the noise. I think the energy, Texas Tech has kind of caught fire right now. And Coach Kellogg is uh, he's searching for answers right now. Did not agree with the travel call or some of the charge calls previously with Boy Jemias. I mean, he's got a first step that is so deadly and so quick. When he takes those jumpers and knocks them down, how exactly do you guard him? Because when he can pull up and knock those down, you know the first step is a problem. It's a, I mean, that is a, puts you in a bind. Red Raiders on a 21 to 9 run here in the second half. Remember, they were trailing by a point at the break. Here's Jermaine Jackson, long shot off the glass and not there. McCuller got it. And Chris Clark going to bring it up with Jermaine Jackson playing some pretty tough defense on him. McCuller, Tyler Edwards, top of the key. Oh, Tyler just cannot get one to fall. Uh, just uh, two of eight after a one of 11 night on Thursday against Tennessee State. Jay Sean Augusto had the right idea, but fired that pass through the hands of Usman Dean. But it's Red Raiders right now in Lubbock. Raiders have found the range and started to clamp down on defense as well. Yeah, I think you come out of the locker room, uh, you've outscored uh, the Sharks 21-9 here in the second half. Right now, the Sharks in the midst of about a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought, so Texas Tech's starting to uh, pull away a little bit. Now, the, now the bigs are in the game. Nice runner by Russell Chiwa, but it doesn't go shot it over another seven-footer, Usman Dean. And then hook shot right there by Big Russ. I'm telling you, that'll be a tough one to stop. Jermaine Jackson, wow. Long range jumper by the little guard. It's a night three pointer. That's what they uh, make on average coming into the game. That does LIU. They've made nine of them, nine of 17 so far. And Randy is just hot. 7 of 12, he just pouring them in from everywhere. He's got 19 if he gets in the paint. Look out, the Red Raiders have outscored LIU 24 to 12. In the paint. And they have to defend the defense on the little guy. He got around Chiwa. He got it in the corner. Shot from Ashton Bradley, contested by Ramsey. Only a two, but it still goes. Houston area. And the Sharks have battled back. Down by eight. Here's Davide Moretti. And Jackson on him and shot it over the top. Davide Moretti adds to his point total. And the 12, a couple of threes, and then really, I mean, it's all the mid-range game that he's been hurting the Sharks with. In the switch, Russell Chiwa got on Jermaine Jackson back on Ty Flowers now at 6-9. Flowers on the baseline, in and out and no good, and Ramsey pulls it down. Raekwon Clark, as advertised offensively, Flowers just has not gotten going. Chris Clark got the board, gave it back to Chiwa, who had it slapped away, and Ramsey had it for a moment but lost it. And Bradley couldn't save a teammate pass and it belonged to the Red Raiders.
Well, in that possession a second ago, you know, you'd like Clark to maybe go up with that one. He gives it to, to Big Russ, and Russ is like, what are you going to do this thing? Yeah, I've got to, you know, but uh, you, you really like to see Clark almost just become a little bit more selfish with his mentality uh, when it comes to the offensive end. It's just uh, going to be something they have to, you know, get it out of him as he's so unselfish. Does such a good job of facilitating and uh, on the glass and bringing the ball up when needed. He's got six points and six rebounds, but yeah, he got that rebound and had it a point blank right in front of the rim and handed off to the big freshman. <laughs> Jemias Ramsey is feeling it tonight. Wow. A to 13 now, 22 points. Here's the little guy, Jermaine Jackson, on the drive. Raekwon Clark couldn't get the tip. He's playing with four fouls and 15 points. Karen Shannon quickly back up the floor. Tyler Edwards going to get that one to go and he's fouled. Yeah, Coach Kellogg wants to time out here to talk about it right now. He's has uh, got left in this one, and his team needed every bit that he could give them today, but uh, just not had, has not been his night. But uh, Raycon Clark with uh, 15 points has certainly done, uh, done the most damage for the Sharks. Tyler Edwards, again, despite not his best shooting performance, is in double figures with 10 points. He's been good at the free throw line, has not missed there yet this season. Rashawn Cotton going to try to take Jemias Ramsey on the drive. And may get called for the charge. He does. Was that Holy Field? Underneath I set. So. Holy yes. Field took it. Uh, helped over uh, baseline. And you see it right here. Ramsey trying to guard him. Hold, yeah, takes it. He takes the hit. Outside that Art 9 team fouls on LIU. They'll drop back in a zone on this trip by the Red Raiders. John, I believe that's six taking charges today. That's an impressive number by the Red Raiders. Clark aboard. He's got three to go with his 15 points. Rashawn Cotton gave it to Clark. He's been good. Inside scores. Beat TJ Holyfield up and scores. He, he, what you said, I mean, he just scores. He figures out a way to do it at all levels as uh, you see the Sharks switch to a bit of a 2 3 zone here. Tyler, good look out front, in and out, not good. And TJ Holyfield had inside position on Ty Flowers, who reaches over the top of the Red Raider big man. He gets called for the foul. And the Red Raiders now lead Seven University by a count of 31 to 16 here in the second half after. Being down by one at the break, T.J. Holyfield. Four points tonight, and make it five to go with seven rebounds, a couple of assists. Red Raiders got by without his offense the other night, Chris, when he was on the bench in foul trouble for much of that uh, contest. Yeah, you know, and uh, obviously tonight, not necessarily in foul trouble, but again, doing it without his offense, which is a good sign for this team learning how to, to beat, beat you in different ways and different guys having to step up. But when you're stud freshman and Jemias Ramsey's four or five from behind the arc uh, to go with uh, some other main buckets, he's got 22, that certainly helps. Impressive performance by the Red Raiders guard. Here's Ty Flowers backing away. Three doesn't go, and look who's sailing to grab the rebound, Jemias Ramsey. Iron Man. John, he, he's not even hitting any kind of rim. Those are just pure. They're dropping in from everywhere. I mean, he, he's just, I mean, no stepping into him. Goodness gracious. Five of six from behind the arc. Great for the Clark, defended by Holyfield, looking for an opening. May have hooked the Red Raider forward, but T.J. Holyfield will be called for the foul, and Raekwon Clark will be at the free throw line, but Jemias Ramsey has equaled his career high as a Red Raider with 25. I mean, that's just it's perfect uh, touch. Uh, Red Raiders in the midst of a 12-2 run, largely thanks to Jemias Ramsey. Had 25 previously against Houston Baptist in that Red Raider game played in Midland at the Shaft Center. 
It is equal that with just under, well, seven minutes remaining. Clark underneath. Shot may have been deflected by Holyfield. He got it back. A pass taken away into the hands of Flowers, who either traveled or was fouled underneath. I, I think Red Raider fans wanted him traveling or stepping out of bounds, but T.J. Holyfield may have aided in that step and foot out of bounds. I think he's just out of bounds. I mean, he's just falling out of bounds. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Just lost his balance. The whistle comes before he lands out of bounds, but I'm not certain that was... Uh, he was headed that way. Yeah. Flowers' his feet are just right close together, and he just lost his balance. One and one opportunity for the left-hander. He's a junior out of Waterbury, Connecticut. That was, that's a, that was a fourth personal on uh, T.J. Holyfield. Picked up two very quickly uh, uh, against uh, Raekwon Clark and then underneath against Ty Flowers. Clark has played for a long time with four fouls. Yeah, you know, Chris Kellogg and L.I.U. They haven't really had much of a choice. Friendly roll, and that's a career high for Jemias Ramsey. 27 points. You call it friendly roll, we call it shooter's touch. Either way, it goes in. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and again, stepped into that one, a bit of a mid-range shot from about 15 feet out. But uh, he can score in punches, as we've seen tonight. First Sean Cotton over McCuller. Three ball does not draw iron. You'll hear about it here. Sean Cotton. Air ball. Shooting about 30% coming into the game from, uh, from three, but uh, drew nothing there. Ramsey had the ball. Knocked away, tried to save it, and on this end, Raekwon Clark can't score, and Davide Moretti may have just been called for a phantom foul. I think Clark lost the ball going up, Chris. He, yeah, he did, and I don't see the contact. I think once it misses, and I think Coach Kellogg, Coach Kellogg and Coach Beard are kind of laughing about it. Let's we'll see it again right here. Yeah, he does it. I mean, I, I think the problem is maybe the timing of the whistle. If you blow it initially, whenever there's, whenever Davide contests it right there, but instead, it comes after the miss in the rebound. Then you hear the whistle. That's the problem. Maybe timing of the whistle right there. Davide thought he had stopped a two-on-one break and had the rebound. But got whistled for the foul. Clark got one of the two free throws. He's got 18 to lead Long Island. Here's the Red Raiders, Clark. Chris Clark fouled inside. <laughs> And Ty Flowers is the guilty party, and he is done for the day. Yeah, he fouled out. This would be, he's not going to have fond memories of his trip to Lubbock, Texas. Finishes with uh, seven points, five boards, fouls out. Coming in, averaging 16 and 13. And uh, had four double doubles out of five games, but uh, it will now be four of six. And, you know, if, if LIU was going to have a chance in this one, he had to play really, really well. He just did not give it to, to his team today. Raekwon Clark certainly did with 18, but Ty Flowers uh, way off his average, and the Red Raiders extending a lead they have built here in the second half. <laughs> And, and, you know, you, you, Chris Clark knocks down free throws like that. Again, just like we talked about Kyler Edwards earlier in the broadcast. I mean, you can get him to the free throw line by being more aggressive around the basket instead of looking to, to pass. And again, it equals offense, and you're going to need some of that. That pass stolen away by Terrence Shannon and <laughs> got in there trying to get the huge dunk and hit the front of the rim. He just got hung up on the rim, I think, tried to wind it up a little bit <laughs> too much. He steals the pass right here as he stepped in, and he's got a breakaway, but he's got two people right trailing and goes up and just may have taken off a little too early. 
and it doesn't go. You think uh, he'll be reminded of that at times? <laughs> it's not going to be. That's not going to be uh, something he wants to see again. I tell you what, though, he's got a really impressive dunk earlier in the game that did not hit the rim. Jemias Ramsey's got an impressive game going. That shot not there, but tipped back up twice by the Red Raiders. Clark still fighting for it with McCuller, and Texas Tech has the ball. And Chris Beard still coaching this game like it is a, uh, a tie game, or he's down. Kevin McCuller in the corner as the shot clock counts down and hits the three. That's uh, McCuller's second three on the day, and again, he's been hesitant to pull the trigger on some of those, but again, that's the one thing that he's really lacked early on the season. He got so much energy, but he's just hesitant to try to score. And we've got him and Clark on the floor at the same time. But you, need, you need them to, to be a little more selfish, but... Uh, Again, part of that is is deferring, part of that is young team, part of that is Chris Clark, newcomer, even though he's a senior. Man, I didn't come here to take all the shots. I'm trying to get my teammates involved. Jemias may come out. I don't know if we'll see him again. Uh, 27 on the night for Mr. Ramsey. Goodness gracious. He is uh, hitting on all cylinders heading into Vegas next week. Probably not old enough to go to the blackjack table, but... Uh, <laughs> Certainly be good luck for somebody. Usman Deem at the line there for LIU put up the air ball. The Red Raiders have it after the missed free throw attempt. Under four minutes to play. Red Raiders 83-61 after trailing by a single point at halftime. Big Russ up top to set the pick. Shot clock again counting down. As Terrence Shannon started in from the outside, got tripped up, and we've got a foul. But it's the Red Raiders by 22 as you watch Texas Tech TV. What, 37 minutes or so, you've got uh, 19 assists to just nine turnovers. That's really the key, too, because Chris wants you, you, you know, his team sharing the basketball, being unselfish. We've talked about some of that, but also not turning it over and just nine turnovers tonight. So that two to one assist to turnover ratio certainly uh, there for you. And, uh, you know, just really have pulled away here in the second half because of their ability to share the basketball, hit shots, as we saw Aunt Ramsey exit the game earlier in 27. Red Raiders had four 16 Long Island turnovers and turned those into 14 points, but mostly they have put the clamps on the offense of Long Island in the second half as Jay Sean Augusto inside swatted by Big Russ. <laughs> that got the head coach uh, for Texas Tech certainly fired up. Tried to get in and float that one over the seven-footer, and Russ Chiwa sends it the other direction. Yeah, LIU, one of their last eight right now in the midst of a scoring drought of about four minutes or so. Nine of 21 in the second half, while the Red Raiders are shooting better than 60% here in the final 20 minutes so far. Augusto again got in the lane. Back outside. Julian Bath's shot isn't there. The Red Raiders let it go. Yeah, and that's what's going to have to, you know, Big Russ is going to have to get used to getting switched and ended up on an island defensively. And he's athletic enough to handle it, but he's going to end up against much smaller uh, guards that are a lot quicker, and he's going to have to learn how to handle that. That happened to Norris Oriase repeatedly uh, last year for the Red Raiders. Is you, you have that switching style, and when you switch everything, you end up in a, in a bind with your big out there if, if he can't guard and still try to ISO you. Same thing that happens with uh, Davide Moretti on the flip side. He ends up with a much bigger guy trying to post him up, and again, you got to be able to handle it. I'm just going to make a prediction here that if Big Russ switches on anybody all season long, they're going to be smaller. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many that are going to be bigger than a seven foot, 280 pound freshman. That's uh, probably a fair assessment. <laughs> He's a big old boy. Clarence Nadolny will be at the line and waiting to check in for the Red Raiders. Is Andre Sabrasov. For Chris Clark. I thought Clark was reaching down at his hamstring like. He needed to come out of the ball game. 
Uh, Chris Clark, speaking of double doubles, he finishes with eight and eight and uh, three assists, but again, just has a way of filling up the stat sheet. See, when you, when you get to this, uh, these tougher non-conference games, on paper anyway, Iowa, you know, then either Creighton or San Diego State, that's when you'll see Chris Clark be a really, you know, a mismatch because he's, he's such a big guard, if you will, that is a mismatch when, when, when you, you know, against these, um, you know, mid-major type teams, but he'll re it'll really show up on what he can give you when you're going against guys that are, are, are much bigger and have more length. Like Iowa certainly will. Kevin McCuller at the free throw line. Good. Eighty-nine, sixty-one. Red Raiders. Jermaine Jackson still trying to penetrate. Got it to Ashton Bradley in the corner. Not there on the shot. The ball bounced around into the hands of Chiwa. And the Red Raiders have it with two minutes and 20 seconds to play. McCuller turned around. Nobody there on defense. Take it to the rack. Well, it's like a zone set right there. And you get the ball right there at the free throw line. Kevin McCuller, I think, was waiting for you know, the defense to step up. Nobody did. And uh, he just took it to the basket made a layup. Vershawn Cotton got the jumper. But lately, points for the Sharks have been few and far between. They've only scored 20 points in the second half. Here's Saprasov to Chiwa on the baseline. Rainbow jumper not there, but Nadolny pulls it down and picks up the foul from Jermaine Jackson. He'll be back at the line. And, John, you look at the score, 91-63, and, and it's hard to believe you were down at the half. You, you, you were losing when these teams went to the locker room. You've come out and outscored these guys 50 to 21 if you're Texas Tech here in the second half. I'm trying to add to that. As the Red Raiders will extend that non conference home winning streak, it'll go to 51, and Chris Beard will remain perfect against non conference foes in this building. Bad way to spend uh, Sunday after church, though. Yeah. yeah. In front of a uh, big crowd and some good basketball around the holidays. Red Raiders ranked 12th in the nation will go to 5 and 0. Play again on Thanksgiving Day in Las Vegas. Cotton trying to make a move or two to get a ball off to a teammate called for traveling and what's interesting about that uh, that Iowa team that you'll play is they hosted DePaul who the Red Raiders will see the week after Thanksgiving in Chicago as part of that you know Big 12 Big East challenge that it's in its first year DePaul uh, went into Iowa and, and won pretty big which I think was a surprise so again the schedule about to toughen up quite a bit here in, the, in the coming weeks for the Red Raiders McCullers three did not find the mark. Avery Benson scrambled to save that ball and thought he had to a teammate Andre Saprasov, but the officials say Saprasov last to touch it before it got out of bounds. And we are counting down towards one minute to play. Red Raiders are going to take it away. Saprasov is out there in front, but Nadolny's going to do what Terrence Shannon couldn't a moment ago. Get that ball over the rim and slam it home. Uh, Ferris and Dolly did not take off too early. No hanging up on the rim there. <laughs> Vershawn Cotton comes right back. Long range for Long Island, who has 10 threes in the ball game. Red Raiders need to get the ball to their Russian teammate. Big Russ, though, going to take it from the outside. And he hit it. Wasn't sure what he was supposed to do. do I, am I pulling the trigger here? Am I not? But uh, nice to see the big fella. Look at him rim running right here. <laughs> in the game. Already down the floor. Uh, they won't look to get a shot up, I don't think, in this possession. No, in the final 20 seconds of the ball game. But if Long Island's going to come after you. But they are going to back away now. The Red Raiders are going to win it. 96-66. Red Raiders are going to win by 30 after trailing by one at halftime. Chris Beard gets his 81st career win here in Lubbock. 
in this win over Long Island today, 96 to 66, a career afternoon for Jemias Ramsey, who finished.